I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we get super busy as we dive into the Productive Bees mod. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now jumping back into some more All The Mods 9, today I want to get into Batania. That's right, the magic of all magic mods. Or is it? Now we have started a ton of mods in this pack and we now have tons of ways of generating resources, but there has been one mod that I have been kind of neglecting to get into, but today we completely get into this mod, but we need to build an area for it. And that mod is going to be productive bees. Now I definitely need to get busy with this one. And well, today what I want to do is I want to build out an area for bees. And I kind of have an idea, a domey idea. Now I'm back in the mining dimension, but this is more for testing purposes because I want to use the builder to clear out an area. And I want this area to be a dome. And this is the best way to sort of see it because RF tools no longer has the actual shape that would normally be shown in the right hand side of this. Um, we need to use this to sort of see how this is going to be built. So I'm going to set this to top dome. And this is what I actually want. I want to have a top dome that is hollow. And then I need to figure out roughly how big I want this. So inside of this dome is where I want to get started with the bees. And I want to build a sort of a biome within this dome. At least that's my idea. And I want to put bees in here and I want to farm them in here and make it all look kind of natural, if at all possible. Now, when you're setting up a dome, the dimensions of the sides here, these two sides are going to be how wide it is. Whereas if you modify this number, it's going to determine how tall it is. And so you can actually sort of adjust the shape in that way. So with these current settings, if I go ahead and I show the support view, we will see that this is a rather nice shape. But what we can do is when I remove this, we can increase the top dimension here to be, let's say, 50. And that's going to make it a little bit of a different shape. Um, so if we go ahead and now display it, you're going to see it's a little bit taller, right? And this is a little bit better. I do like it being taller up here. Um, it gives it a lot more room and this right here is really nice. So if we clear out an area, that means we can expand if need be and make more of these using this card. Now, something to note, uh, right now you see that this is all sort of, uh, set up to clear. And what we really need to do is we need to set this one to be solid to clear, but we should be able to take the exact same settings here and set this to uh, top dome. If we go up to this again, let's see, top dome, dome, leave it hollow. And if we do the same thing, so it was 35, 35, and 50, then we can use the builder to actually do its intended purpose. And that is build. And so once we clear it out, we can then fill it all with stone and then continue to modify from there, especially since we're going to be putting this inside of a cave. So I'm just sort of taking you through my sort of build process and how I'm planning on doing this. Now, if I was to set this up, uh, what we're going to need to do is go 17 blocks out from this edge right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Somewhere right in, right in here. Now I have this placed in and just to double check that everything is going to be just fine. We'll set everything to zero. Make sure it's all good. Make sure that's set to solid. And let's see our support view. And yes, okay, so we do need to go one more in, I believe, just to make sure that this is actually in line with this and not this block. Man, we really need more mods like this that kind of let you do almost like 3D work inside of Minecraft and still sort of be survival friendly. I really, really enjoy the RF Tools Builder. It's, it's quite amazing. And all, if, if only the composer was back, oh, we can make some really crazy things. I really miss the composer, which was a thing that used to allow you to make like 3D art almost <laughs> and be able to build it in world or clear out areas like that, being able to rotate all of these different shapes. But anyways, I'm getting carried away here. Uh, so I need to be, be more productive, right? Okay, so this should be ready to go. Uh, just make sure yet again, every time I do the support view, unfortunately it like it resets the offset. So now that we know that is correct, we can go ahead and give it a signal and let it send into a trash can and let it start chomping away at this area. 
Now, once it's done, this is where we're actually gonna use the builder to build. Also, don't make the mistake I made. I, I forgot to swap out to the right card. You need the uh, the clearing quarry card, not not the not the regular quarry card. Yeah, I made a big mistake. So perfect, here's the dome cleared out. Now, like I, like I said, remember this section up here, right? Um, this is going to be sort of a, a thing that we have to deal with as all of the holes and stuff. And so the easiest way to deal with all of that is to just use the fill card and just expect it. Like just to make sure it's one size further than you you do expect. Um, and this is also gonna fill in the floor and everything. And so I'm going to turn this off and then we're just gonna swap this out with a barrel and we'll just fill this with some stone for right now. Uh, that way we can sort of use our, our uh, exchanging tool as sort of like a painting tool to, to kind of color everything we want. Something to note, by the way, about how it actually places blocks is it will actually place it random. So whatever blocks you have in here, it's gonna randomize what blocks are in there every time it places them. So keep that in mind whenever you're setting this card up. And uh, just like I have right here, the exact same dimensions, dome, top, but this time hollow, and then place that in there and we should be ready to go. And uh, just simply turn it on and we're gonna notice it filling in the walls, which is what we wanna see. And you see it's randomly pulling all of the individual stone out. So I'm just gonna grab even more stone and just let it continue doing this. Just like you see here, it's a lot of stone it's placing in, but it's gonna be well worth it. This is just going to be the initial hub of all of our bees. And I am super excited to get into bees, by the way, because there are a ton of custom bees in this pack. And I mean a ton. So I'm starting to plan this out. And I was thinking up here, a part of the dome area, what if I make it look like it's actually the sky? Now to do this effect, what we need to do is get into a little bit more Ars Nouveau. So four of these will allow us to make, if we craft in here, a, uh, a Mage Bloom seed. And this Mage Bloom fiber allows us to make a very special weave. And we should be able to grow this in our normal crop farm that we're farming with mystical agriculture to farm this stuff incredibly fast. And there it goes, just look at it. <laughs> It's being farmed so fast with uh, very little frame rate, as you see in the top right. <clears throat> so now the other part of this equation outside of the Mage Bloom fibers is the Mage Bloom block itself, because we need to combine this and make ourselves Skyweave. Oh, this is going to be so good. So Skyweave is actually kind of insane, because when you place it down, it looks just like the outside. And so during the day, it basically is a bypass straight to the skybox. And so I want to use this to, uh, well, to make this look like it's a part of the sky. And so that should be pretty straightforward. I should be able to just simply click here and hopefully that exchanges all of those blocks, but I don't want it going off into the edge. So let's limit this and do it one at a time. And I'm just sort of painting this in. And so it's going to go here, but it's also going to, I think I'm going to go out to this border edge right here. It's honestly so trippy watching this take place because you can't even tell that there's like blocks right here. Like you can't tell that this is actually something you're gonna bang your head into. It's very trippy. This is honestly quite epic. The fact that we have this huge skybox here, oh, it's beautiful. And so we should be able to see the sun and everything and the stars at night and we can actually go into it, which is just bonkers. Now, I think what's gonna end up selling this is by putting glass on this. Um, so that'll actually sell the effect as if we're underground, because right now there's no definition to the edges, which seems like it's just a giant hole. But if we actually stone cut this stuff and I wanna do framed glass, we can go ahead and make this look incredibly interesting. I think in the very middle though, I'm gonna do the tiled glass. Um, so. All we gotta do is place down some of this for reference. And man, this is again, where the building gadgets just really come into play. So let's go ahead and do uh, a little bit of a range. Unfortunately, we can't actually see the blocks we're changing. Just kind of disoriented. Actually, oh no, we need, a, we need the builder, not the exchanger. So this is where the building gadget is going to come into play. So let's see, now we can see the outline. So perfect. And so I'm gonna build like this and then on these other edges, I should be able to build here. Uh, I wanna build on the outside, but we need to make sure this is set to connected areas. Is that gonna work? Ooh, we definitely don't want fuzzy. There we go. And now this will fill in with the glass 
And yes, this I think is going to sell the effect way more. So now it definitely feels more like we're in an interior space, but still have access to the outside, even though the outside is far from up, just right up there. Now, bear with me on this. I have been hard at work. It took me about an hour to sort of prep up and uh, really just exchange all of the blocks. But this is going to be our B area. Yes, this is kind of fancy. And just look at that up there. It looks like we're in an entirely different area. We just completely go through here and bam. Now, I went ahead and placed down some cherry trees. These are actually uh, snow blossoms from Biomes of Plenty. I was able to buy those from the market. And then we already had some of the Forbidden and Arcanist trees. These are the ones that drop gold from the leaves, but they, they have leaf particles and the trees themselves have particles, which I just, I think the particles just add to the ambience. Looks really, really nice. So how do we actually get into resourceful bees? Because this is how we're gonna be productive today. It, it, we've gotta actually do something with the bees, right? Now, thankfully, a few episodes ago, we actually prepped ourselves up for productive bees and kind of helped ourselves out. And the way that we did that was by setting up bees and getting bees and getting uh, honeycombs started um, from mystical agriculture. So we have tons of honey essence, which is really going to allow us to jumpstart into this mod because we are going to need a ton of honey treats to really get started quickly. Now, one of the first things I like to do is set up some traders. So as you see behind me, I have some traders that are beekeepers and these are using the hives from productive bees. And uh, so all you need for those are just some campfire and uh, and some shears and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, now, once we level these up, these are going to grant us a few things. So let's go ahead and get some emeralds here and start to trade for some things. Like for example, let's just trade for some shears. We're gonna end up using them anyway, so might as well feed them in and get them leveled up and all of that fun stuff. Um, the big thing that these guys trade that I really want are sturdy cages. Um, they're a way to pick up the bees, and there is a way that you can actually craft uh, these cages, but they're not unbreakable, if that makes any sense. So inside of Productive Bees, if we get into this, pr well, PR, <laughs> Productive Bees, um, you'll see these are the sturdy cages that you can find in loot chests or by these villagers, but you can just make these regular bee cages, but whenever you start to interact with them and use them in the world, you're going to notice that, well, they don't really, uh, they'll, they'll break and you don't really want that happening. Now, also, some of them can give you treats and treats are going to be incredibly useful. They can also give you other kinds of honeycombs and all kinds of goodies. For example, these are going to be sugar bag honeycombs, which I believe can be turned and processed into just sugar, if I remember correctly. Actually, they don't even look like they have a real use here other than eating them. Oh, that's right, because they're food. Oh yeah, that's why, that's right. These are just sugar honeycombs that you can just eat. Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. So after paying your way a little bit into this mod, you'll see that we can exchange these for sturdy cages and that's really what I want. So now with that easy stuff out of the way, let's talk about how we actually get started within the bees because this can be a little bit daunting and complicated, but I promise it is gonna be well worth it in the end. So to get started, let's focus over here on our quest, and that is going to be on Nest. And the quests are really nice because it sort of lays them out so you don't have to use JEI to be able to figure everything out. So we are going to get certain bees from these nests. Um, and each, each nest type is going to give you a different type of bee or the same bee depending on the different nests. And also, I do believe that each nest needs to be farmed in its own particular biome that it's related to. So that's another thing, another layer on top of everything else. So the best way to think about this is we need to farm these with treats and they're a way to essentially summon a bee. But it's a little bit more than that. At least that's how it says. It says that it will attract a bee, but in reality, it's, it's spawning a bee for us. Now, when it comes to these nests, you can find them in the world, but I find it best to just simply craft them. So I've gone ahead and crafted most of the nests that we are going to need. And as you see, they're all sort of completed here being that I didn't craft all of the wooden nest types. Um, I don't know why we would need all of them, but it does say dark oak nest lures three different types of bees, um, whereas some of them may not lure all the different types. So if we take a look at the dark, it'll tell us right here, this is another thing we need to look at, uh, of how this will actually um, generate the bees and the chance that we'll get of getting each one of them, right? So this gives three, and if we look at the oak, it gives us two, right? So the dark oak would probably be the best option out of all of these. 
as far as hives to make. Now, if you're also looking for a specific bee, you can just simply click on the bee or hit R on the bee to see how to get it. And you will see also what, what hives it comes from. Uh, so we also see that the blue banded bee is the one that comes in this form, but also is in the cherry one and the acacia one as well. But if I look at the acacia nest, we'll notice that this is actually the only bee that comes out of the acacia nest, which would be great for if you're specifically looking for this one bee, because the acacia nest is only going to produce that one, making your chances of getting it 100%. So I guess instead of this oak nest, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and make the dark one. And that will probably be the best in my case here. Now getting started, this is the perfect one to sort of test out. Uh, but this, they will have uh, different biomes requirements. So this one says it will attract bees in the overworld biome. But for example, the slimy one, I believe, it says attracts wild slimy bees, but the nest must be placed in a swamp biome. So the biomes do matter. And the way I'm seeing that information is I am hitting R on there and clicking the information tab, which is very, very important. And we're gonna have to farm all of these this way. Now, the real way to farm is by making honey treats and this is how we're going to get them to spawn. So we just right click and we'll see that timer in the top. Now, if I was to feed, I believe more honey treats into this, it will make that timer go down significantly. Uh, another way, alternatively, if you don't have infinite amounts of honey treats, kind of like I do, you can use a time in the bottle and that will also accelerate this. But keep in mind, your time is kind of precious. Um, even though I have like almost 50 hours worth of time in there. Um, it is precious. So keep in mind that you will go through hours upon hours if you do this way. But honestly, this is one of the best uses for this. So after a short period of time, the bee will pop out and this is a good time to have that sturdy cage, right? So we can go ahead and click this bee with the sturdy cage and we'll see it says green carpenter bee and I'm going to store this in my backpack. We're going to keep this in here and we are going to end up, we're going to end up having multiple bees all lined through here. Uh, from all of the different biomes. But, but for right now, we can farm at least this one right here. Now I recommend, if at all possible, getting at least two of each of these types. That may seem a little daunting, but if you have at least two, I think you can breed most of these. Well, maybe not all of them, as it does seem like some of these, for example, this blue banded bee, like we had mentioned earlier, well, it has no way of breeding with itself. And you know what? That might be the case for all of these base bees. So you're gonna at least need one of them, but I recommend two because some of them are probably going to need to be clicked on with an item to convert it into a certain type, which is something that we're also gonna go over. Honestly, by the end of today's episode, you're gonna be, well, very, very well versed in bees. Uh, you could say a bee expert. Now, before we go out, let's pump the brakes real quick and let's talk about why do we even need to get into bees in the first place? And that's where I'm going to show you this. These bees right here are some of the best bees, in my opinion, that I have found while looking through JEI. And well, we also need it for the starry bee, which is what we're going to end up making in the first place um, uh, towards the end. So what are some really, really nice bees? Well, there's bees that can actually produce blood, right? Uh, right here. So we can get life essence directly from these combs and we can pump that in to our actual altar, thus automating in an easier way with uh, this... Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but I'm sure it's very technical. Uh, but there's also the bloody bee here, which we haven't gotten into, but this is going to be for evil craft. And so we'll have access to blood with this if we set up this bee. Now, these bees all have their own required recipes and things like that. So keep that in mind. But there's also a skulk bee, which this all has a chance of getting echo shards. But this bee is the main reason, the stellarite bee. This is going to help me so much with a grind because this has a chance, even though it's a 1% chance, every time it produces a comb, it has a chance of actually producing an eternal Stella. And so ultimately I want this Stellarite B and this shouldn't be too difficult for me to produce um, and be able to make, but we've got to get through the B mod first and get every, all the infrastructure up before we can even start using those things. Now, honestly, today, the one true B that I need to get up and running and start producing as quick as possible is going to be the Draconic B. No, not from Draconic Evolution, but it's called the Draconic B from the Productive Bees mod. And this B right here gives us Draconic Combs. And these can be processed inside of a centrifuge to produce Draconic Dust. And we need a lot of this stuff. All of these are going to allow us to make the really nice productivity upgrades and those, and also make the inactive dragon eggs, um, which I believe are used to make regular dragon eggs, if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe not, but it is definitely used in the dragon soul, which is an all the mod item. So yet another reason why we need to get into this mod. 
Uh, but yes, this is used for those production upgrades, and there are a lot more production upgrades than just this base production upgrade. They go even higher, uh, and it is quite nice. But to be able to get this thing, we need to apparently use Dragon's Breath on it, and Dragon's Breath is how we're gonna get this. I think just using one Dragon's Breath is good, and then we just accelerate this all the way up to max, and that will make this bee spawn much, much quicker. And uh, yeah, we, we won't use as much Dragon Breath, even though Dragon's Breath is pretty much infinitely available. So yes, I am going to need, I'm gonna try, let's do, I don't know, how about 20 of these bees? That's, that, and have four hives running for them? I think that would be great. So now let's get into how these bees actually work. And this is kind of interesting because, um, we should be able to easily farm this with refined storage, right? We're going to need advanced beehives, and then we're we're also going to need um, some of these uh, expansion boxes. Um, so I have an interesting way of doing this. Now, keep in mind, you can do this a bunch of different ways, but we're going to utilize some feeding slabs here. And what I want to do is I want to set up a feeding slab and make sure this, by the way, is under your, your beehives. I'm going to set up my expansion box and my beehive with the beehive being on the ground. So the beehive needs to be here. And I'm thinking about setting it up like this with my beehives. So we have three beehives here with our feeding slab going here. Um, and the, bee the feeding slab does need to be in a very specific location, not on the top layer. Do not place it right here. Otherwise your beehives will not work. You have to place it on the bottom block or at least one block below it or near it. Um, and I'm thinking like this, these bees can all share the same feeding slab in this setup. Um, and it may seem a little bit weird because we can go where I'm going to also set up another one right here. Um, but this setup should be kind of efficient. Um, so we're going to put the expansion boxes on top. So I'm going to put the expansion boxes on top of all these hives, just like so. When we put the expansion boxes on, it's really going to open up these beehives. They're actually going to turn into the advanced versions where they can hold up to five bees. But I'm going to go even further with this, right? Um, and I'm going to make it so that way all of these beehives um, work without the bee actually needing to come out of the hive. So to do that, we are going to use simulation upgrades. And you see, I have all of these things set up to uh, for, for auto crafting. But this simulator upgrade is amazing. We can put this in here, and this is going to allow us to put all of our bees in here and farm them. And they're going to keep working. They're going to work without us doing really anything. We just need to sit back and let them produce combs, but they do need the thing on the feeding slab. And these particular bees need dragon's eggs. And so I do have 30 dragon eggs, but they mostly came from this. Like, you only get the one initially, but I did get dragon eggs from our loot fabricator and going through hostile neural networks. So I should be able to place just one in here. They're all gonna share that one egg on three slabs and place one over here. Notice there's three slots, which this works out really nicely. I think this is like the most optimized design right here is having three different hives. So you have three different things on here, technically, if you really wanted to, or in this case, just one. Now, if they're in the simulation, this is where you can actually speed this up with the time in the bottle. And I have this sped up and notice they are producing combs. So at least they are producing this material. And what we need to do is store this in our refined storage system. So down below, I have this set up. It is very loud, uh, but I have this. And all we have to do is just simply put the combs into our system. And then later on, we can just take the combs out and process them inside of a centrifuge. So to make this super simple, we'll just place importers directly on here. And that should do the trick. Um, and that's about as straightforward and as simple as it's going to get. I don't think it could be any simpler than this. I have done a lot more complicated setups in the past, but uh, this is definitely straightforward. You don't even have to worry about this building up with honey. You don't have to put bottles in here. They're gonna work regardless of the honey amount. So you can just ignore the honey. Now this is the true reason why I want these bees is because we want these product productivity upgrades. This makes this so much better. Now by default, we can go ahead and put some speed upgrades in. That's gonna help it go a little bit faster. But these things right here are really where it's going to shine because 260% multiplier, it does cost a lot of these base upgrades, also echo shards and so on and so forth, even nether stars, but it's going to require a lot of these dragon chunks. And this is what is going to be really, really needed. Now, another thing when it comes to processing these combs that we're going to need these bees for, 
is the actual inactive dragon egg. So it just requires a regular egg in here and those draconic chunks will make the inactive dragon egg. The heated centrifuge is incredibly fast. So this is something we're gonna need to strive for because processing combs is really gonna be our bottleneck. For now though, all we have is this heat power centrifuge. So we can put this here and I'm going to use a power uh, let's use a gate. These don't use a whole lot of power. Um, from my testing, they don't use a hard, hardly any at all. Uh, like 256 RF per tick, maybe at max. Uh, but we are going to need an exporter on the top and an importer on the bottom to import our product. Um, now this will also build up with honey and stuff, but we don't, I don't think have to worry about that either. Thankfully. Uh, now other fluids, if they start to build up, that will become an issue. Uh, but for right now, we should be good. So we'll just go ahead and get an exporter and we can use this to just start sending our nine different types of combs or even more with an elite exporter. But for right now, this will be just fine. We're only sending one comb type and this will kind of jumpstart us. So there we go. So that's pretty much done. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this covered up. So let's go ahead and get our draconic combs going in here. And so that should export them out of our system and start putting them in here. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely would start exporting if I actually put them in <laughs> in my storage. So there we go. It is now sending these out and it's going to start producing them. Um, and this can also receive speed upgrades. Now I haven't put the speed upgrades in yet, but that is what this is gonna be all about. So yeah, this is a B mod, pretty techy in that we are going to need to upgrade every machine we build. So putting these into the centrifuge, we'll notice this dramatically increases the speed of the combs. Um, and even faster in the others. And then if we put these in here, this will mean it will produce combs a bit faster than normal as the processing speed is gonna be cut by what, 60%, I believe. So that is quite a bit, but ultimately the productive upgrades is really what we want in here. So at this point, I now have all of my hives placed in and they look kind of nice. I do have trees in the way. I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to remove them or just leave them like this. I think maybe adding some fence uh, would actually look kind of nice. Not that fence is great for bees. I guess bees really wouldn't care, would they? But I could place like some fence in like this. And that actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, looks pretty good. Now, one of those other bees that we were going to need is actually going to be this one, the skulk bee. Uh, skulk bees have a chance of making the skulk comb. And then this can be centrifuged down with a 30% chance of getting an echo shard, which is pretty nice. Now, this does require a digger bee. Now the digger bee actually comes from, I believe the stone hive. So uh, I have this. And so all we have to do is place this in world and right click this on it. And that converts it into that skulk bee. Um, so that is just one of the interactions because the other one is actually breeding. And if you are gonna be doing breeding, I recommend using the breeding chamber. Now you can breed in world, but the breeding chamber is much better. You place the items they need down here and place your two cages in here, and that will end up breeding up the bee, um, which is really nice. Now you are going to need this because it doesn't consume the bees, which is really nice. Um, and it also does, removes that breeding timer, which you wouldn't uh, have. So you would actually need to make sure you have your sturdy cage over here, and then that would put it in here. And it's pretty great. And But that would be a baby bee, and to raise that, you would just place the baby uh, caged bee in here with some treats, and that will actually produce the full size bee without it needing to grow up in world as well. Now you do need to figure out what this needs for the feeding slab. So uh, whenever we look at the bee, we can see its uses. And then we're needing to check the bee flowering and find out what it needs. And in this case, it needs a skulk shrieker in the feeding slab. Thankfully we just put it in the feeding slab and it doesn't need to be physically in the world. And skulk shriekers, well, they can be obtained by using silk touch on them, I believe. I, all right, may not need silk touch. Goodness, let's get out of here. It may not need silk touch, it may just need a hoe, but either way, we now have a couple of them. Now, unfortunately, to be able to get that Stella bee that I really want, it requires us to go all the way up into the diamond bee. And uh, the diamond bee has quite a bit of uh, processing required in order to get there. That's gonna be quite the journey. So to be able to make that particular bee, that means I need a slimy bee, and then this is going to need to be combined with uh, a glowstone bee to produce, I believe a redstone bee. And then we need to take the redstone bee and breed it with a blue banded bee to make a lapis bee and so on and so forth. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. So if we go to productive bees, I am going to need a few more sturdy cases. Uh, really, we only need one of these bees. So 
This one in the glowstone. The glowstone one I have to do in the nether. But there we go. That's a slimy bee. Oh boy, there's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> How cute. Now for the glowstone nest, you got to keep in mind, if you take a look at it, it tells you what the actual spawning item is. And in this case, it is glowstone. So we have to feed it glowstone instead of honey treats. Not all of these will actually give you the bee from the honey treats. So in this regard, this is going to be a glowstone bee. Boop. So now this is where some of the other base bees come into play. So we're going to need a chocolate bee and we're going to mix that with a glowing bee. And then leave us a redstone bee. And we can see it right here, chocolate and glowing bee. And then we'll need a lapis with a blue banded bee. So to get the lapis, we'll take that redstone and then that will progress even further. Now the slimy bee is going to come into play because we need to breed the slimy bee with, uh, let's see, a diamond bee to get an emerald bee. I think that's about it, right? Uh, I thought the emerald bee, it made it look like it goes here, but really we're just going down this route into the diamond bee. It's actually not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Um, so take the glowing bee and then we'll take the... Let's see, chocolate mining bee, because this is the redstone. So yes, and these just require flowers. We just put a single poppy down here, and then the breeding process is going to start. And you can see right here is what it's going to produce. When we put the cage here, that will give us a redstone bee, and we can make more than one of these bees. Now this process does take some time, and this is where that time in the bottle is really going to play a pivotal role. I feel like this is the one mod, uh, this and occultism, that the, uh, the time in the bottle is insanely useful. Now there is another way that we could potentially start to speed up processes like this, uh, but that's something we'll get into down the road, and that is going to involve draining the warden of its farts. Uh, yeah, uh, forgive my speech. It is an interesting thing, and it's something we'll eventually do. And there we go. We now have ourselves a redstone bee, and we need to make this adult because if we plan on breeding it in any way, we're gonna have to make sure it turns into an adult. So just like I mentioned earlier, there we go. It is now converting into an adult. Now with just some flowers, I'm combining the redstone bee with the blue banded bee. And there we go. We're going to get the lapis one. Before we know it, we're going to have a diamond one. That's going to make it really nice. So now we're about to produce the diamond bee. And this is where things are going to get a little bit more than just actually producing a bee that is a diamond bee. We need to take this bee and then we need to crush it. Um, yes, you heard me correctly. We need to crush this bee because this is the genetic part of this mod. And to do that, we are going to take a bottler and then we are going to place the bee in and we're going to squish it and it's going to turn into a gene sample. Okay. A gene sample is going to again, then go into the gene indexer where we should be able to process this gene sample. Well, the gene indexer is a little bit more complicated. Uh, we need to put it into the centrifuge and then the centrifuge will then separate it into different genes and then we can put those genes in the gene indexer. So we're going to really need a powered centrifuge directly dedicated to this alone. Now, this may look a little strange, but I have somewhat automated this process. All I have to do is put the poppies in. This will breed. Make sure I have these sturdy casings in here, and that is producing diamond bees. The diamond bees then need to go over here into this hopper. Well, actually, we'll just need to make sure it's going here. Um, and then I just need to use my tool here to make sure it's not pulling anything out of this. There we go. And um, yeah, now it should be sending the baby diamond bees into here and then that should be converting them going into here. We have the full size ones. So now that we have a full size one, let's see if we can't squish it. <laughs> this is going to be kind of interesting, but inside of here, I have some glass bottles. I'm gonna place this door here and then I'm gonna place in my bee and then pull it. <laughs> So doing this gives us squished bee material, and I'm then going to put that into the centrifuge, and then that is going to produce these genetic samples. Those genetic samples then go in here. Now, I only have one for right now, but we should have, hopefully, a diamond bee right here. So it's a 27% productive diamond bee. And I think we have to use a lever. Um, but uh, it, it may not be a lever, but uh, putting it inside the gene indexer is going to combine them together and continue to produce high-end bees. So, if we continue to do this, this process here, we should eventually end up with a diamond bee. So, notice right here it's 43, and I think if I give this a lever signal, it will then automatically sort them. Um, in doing that, we will end up combining them. So now this is at 49% and so on and so forth. And eventually what will happen is whenever I have a maxed version of this sample, I can then turn it into a spawn egg. 
And just like that, I now have a Productive Bee Diamond 100% gene sample. So now that we have 100% Productive Bee Diamond gene sample, we can combine that with a comb, and that will give us a honey treat, but it's a very special one. And then we need to go into an incubator, and this is how we're gonna produce some bees. So we place this here, and then that is going to pr uh, start producing. We will put some speed upgrades in here, and that will make it a little bit faster. So four speed upgrades is the max. Um, but yes, this should produce a spawn egg. And that is what we actually need in order to make the Stellarite bee spawn egg. Um, as you see, the diamond spawn egg is what goes in here with some Stellarite and some basic materials, including, thankfully, one soul. Um, and we have everything for that. So that will get us our Stellar AB, which is one B that I definitely want running as soon as possible. And there we go, the Diamond B. So with all of my ingredients onto my forge here, the last thing we need is to place this in, and we should have everything we need in order to craft this. Perfect. So we just boop it with a hammer. And that is going to be a Stellarite B that is going to be available to us. I am so excited for this. Oh, this saves me a whole lot of time grinding out souls and all of the blood and everything needed for this. If we can just leave it running, then by the time we have everything else done, we should hopefully have enough Eternal Stellas because this essentially automates Eternal Stellas, believe it or not. Oh, it's... it's not the prettiest thing in the world <laughs> that spawn egg is not pretty but it is amazing to be able to have this so now that we have the stellarite spawn egg we should be able to just simply spawn the bee by clicking it on the ground well, let's go ahead and do that and there we go it's like i said not the prettiest bee in the world but this bee is going to be fantastic so i can actually just place it inside the same hive here as this one and there we go, now we have Celery B, and we can use this comb here, the same feeding slab for this. Technically, what I should do is probably put it in its own hive over here. Yeah, I probably should do that. You can pull bees out by putting your empty cages in here, and that will uh, allow you to pull the bees out, by the way, in case you didn't know. And this bee, by the way, needs a Stellarite block. So there we go. And so with this, this is my journey through bees, and my goodness, is it just the start as we are going to probably get quite a few more bees rocking and rolling in here there's a reason why i set up all of these hives and that's because we definitely want to make more of these bees the process is just going to take some time and a little bit of hard work and dedication so guys if you enjoyed today's episode and you learned something new be sure to click that subscribe button and also ring that beautiful notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss an episode just like this one because just because it's in the season middle of the season in like episode 30s doesn't mean that this information is less important who knows you might be able to use this at the start of your playthrough and get into this mod super early so be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode where i might just come up with a new idea that nobody has done yet so guys thank you so very much it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that huge thanks by the way is going to go out to Mr. Pug, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Guys, be sure to check out the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, and also comment down below what you think of Productive Bees. Uh, is it your favorite bee mod? I, I don't know. I've kind of played with a lot of different random bee mods throughout the years, and, and this one happens to be one of my favorites, but is this one your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below, and if not, what's your favorite one? And, well, guys, as always, Thanks for watching. Bye.